It's Madden NFL 23, and we'll see who rules the skies in today's battle. It's the Cards and the Seahawks, and it's coming up next on EA Sports. We are just south of Pioneer Square here in the Green Road for the city of Seattle at newly named Lumen Field, home of the 12s. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Arizona Cardinals and the Seattle Seahawks. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. six and it's a pretty good return here as they get this up to the 29 so out come the Seahawks now for their first possession and a glance here at the vet he's got a lot of years under his belt in the National Football League I still remember back in 2013 when he was drafted out of West Virginia he was coming off a back-to-back 4,000 yard seasons for the Mountaineers Hadn't seen as much game time in recent years, but at one point, a capable starter in the NFL. They'll run with Walker to begin the drive. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football. But that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. On second and 11 now. Smith. They're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. Trying to defend the out route there, got the P.I. call. And you know what's difficult about that one is sometimes you want to make the undercut move and go for the football, and other times you just want to hang on the upfield shoulder and make the tackle. I think he got caught in between and created a foul. Trying the left side with Walker. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this, up to the 41-yard line. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field, but his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to it. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. On second down, it's Walker. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Seven yards there on a first down. But that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. Walker now on first and ten. 
And a pretty athletic run right there as he's going to get this down inside the 40. It's a gain of 12 first down Seahawks. They did tell us they wanted to establish the ground game early, didn't they? They did, and a small sample size that we've seen so far, but pretty good return. Yeah, you got to like that. They've strung together a couple of first downs, established what they wanted, the running game. And guess what? They also got their lead guy running it pretty well, too. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Again, it's Walker. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old-school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense? Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive, and like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. The first look here for D.J. Dallas. That's some strong running there as he's down just shy of the 20 on the edge of the red zone. It's a gain of 12 first down Seahawks. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and goes through it for a solid game. runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. They'll try the air now with Smith. And that one off the mark behind him. Incomplete. So it looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. Smith an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. They'll toss this out right to Walker. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Throwing on third down, Smith. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. It's pretty early in the game, but they've already tried to establish him not just as a runner, but as a receiver as well. Didn't happen there, but I wouldn't be surprised at all to see them try again shortly. Myers' kick is good, and the Seahawks grab a 3-0 lead. Even though they didn't find the end zone, they have to be pretty pleased with how they moved the ball on the ground because we know that that was one of their big goals in this game. And that really goes through the entire offense because when you're running the ball effectively, just about everyone's involved. It's not just the guy carrying the football. It's everyone blocking for him, both inside and on the perimeter. on to kick it away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Cardinals now getting set to go offensively, and it'll be the dual threat quarterback, Kyler Murray, leading the way. Drafted with the idea that he'd be one of the most dangerous quarterbacks in the NFL when he put it all together. We've been seeing that progress throughout his career. This guy's legs, we knew they were phenomenal. Arm, top notch. But now we're seeing his mind come into the game. Reed's defense is better and better each and every week and is showing patience as a passer as well. Not as eager to exit the pocket, finding guys downfield for bigger plays. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. First carry, for, and oh, right away, he lost the football. And his guys are going to get the football at the 28-yard line. Well, he's going to have to 
shakeup and now what's first time he touches the football and he drops it on the ground. So many times we talk about quarterbacks and taking care of them early to get them in the flow with safe throws, right? But with a runner, there's no such thing as a safe run, right? And right out of the gate, you're going to be in, you're going to be in some traffic. You gotta take care of the ball, and he didn't do that. Following the fumble recovery, Smith. He hits his target, Lockett. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful of one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. Straight ahead, Walker. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Sticking with Walker on second down. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. Some good strong running right there. Some power and some explosiveness just about got him into the end zone. Third and two, Smith. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Well, Brandon, we see why it's a team game there, because there's a side relief that they just released defensively. If he's able to get that one away, that's likely a touchdown. But instead, that pressure from the front got to him and forced the incompletion. You're right. He had him open just a split second too late on the release. Now here's Jason Myers. He gets set for the Seahawk field goal. This is less than an extra point, just a 19-yard attempt. Myers' kick is good, and that will make it 6 to nothing. So the defense are able to force their first turnover of the game, and then they add on to that by getting the field goal. And you don't just want to take the ball away from your opponent, partner. You want to make them hurt as well. And if you don't score yourself on defense, turn it over to your offense and have them put points on the board. Now 6-0 our score as the kicks away. And no run back here for Moore. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25. There's James Conner now as he trots back onto the field. He's got to clear his mind a little bit right now. One carry, and that carry was a lost fumble. Clear his mind, clear his hands, and, this, and just let this one go. Sometimes it happens. You drop the ball, get a full game ahead of him, hand it to him again, and see if they can start to produce. Murray now on first down. And this will be incomplete. Had an open man that time. They end up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Murray giving to Connor on the option. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. A gain of 10, first down Arizona. Now that's how you start to get back in the good graces of your head coach. Remember, he fumbled on the last possession. How about the faith they showed him, giving him the ball again, and he repaid him, picking up a first down.
Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. From the gun, Murray. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. That would have broken play, but it ends up being a good play. The scramble goes for 20. Well, when you've got a quarterback like this dead to rights, you got to make sure to wrap up. Instead, though, he breaks free, and off he goes. Yeah, and at the risk of sounding just a little bit trite, this is just a tackle that needs to be made. It's one thing when you've got a bruising 230-pound running back coming your way, but when it's a quarterback who's running for his life, your teammates will tell you, you've got to get him on the ground. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Murray going to hold on to it once more. And a very determined run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 27. Good effort. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that. And here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game. And all that preparation, it goes right out the window. First down, Murray. Catch is made by Marquise Brown. And he's brought down, but not before a gain of 13. Down to the 13. First and 10 in the red zone. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. From the red zone, here's the Heisman Trophy winner, Murray. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Murray a give. This is Connor. And he will get into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. James Connor taking it in from four yards out. And the Cardinals are an extra point away from capturing the lead. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up. Meaning, when you get on a guy, you just stay right there. Each guy has his own assignment. That allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. Now Matt Prater for the point after. It's up and good, so they go the conservative route instead, and it gets them a 7-6 lead here in the opening quarter. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. We kick out of bounds. So now the possession will begin at the 35 after the errant kickoff. Well, that's certainly one way to avoid a dangerous kick return, I suppose, but you are giving up extra yardage, that's for sure. Because if you put it out of the end zone, they start at the 25. So at a minimum, you're giving up 10 yards to the offense. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 40. A gear for Walker running right. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. 
Award that tackle for loss to the safety, Buda Baker. But they're certainly not neglecting their run duties as well as they ate up the blockers in front and allowed the secondary to get home. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Sticking with Walker on second down. And not much room to speak of. They'll get about three up to the 41. The card's going nickel. An extra defensive back out there now on third down. Now Gino. Flushed out right. Give him eight yards that time on the scramble, and now fourth down. That looked great when he first took off because, in my mind, there was room to run, and he had the marker in his sight. But I certainly didn't expect him to close so quickly, and neither did he. They got to him just in time, and now that forced him to make a decision with his fourth down call. On fourth down, ready to punt, Michael Dixon. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Ready to go with their next drive, and at the line, the Cardinal offense. And it's a unit last drive that did it all on the ground, Charles. And they controlled it from the interior, big on big, right? Offensive lineman versus defensive lineman. But you know, in order to keep the football moving downfield, other people have to get involved as well. Your wide receivers, your tight ends, lead runners, anything that you have possible to get in front and keep the ball moving. And now the defense may be looking out for a pass coming up. Cardinal football here to start quarter number two as they've got it with a second and four coming up. Here's Murray. That's complete once again to Hopkins. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. First and ten, here's Murray to the sideline, and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going, and right now it's paying off with big chunks of yardage as shown by that last play. Seahawk territory now. It's first and 10 at the 47. Murray to air it out again. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. On second and ten, Murray. That pass complete to... Oh, he's hit. He lost the football. Put it on the carpet. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And they bring this one back. It's a fumble recovery and a Seattle touchdown. 
And he has great speed, defensive back speed. Once he got and took off, there was no catching. And I know every team tells you to hustle no matter what the play, but there was no chance of catching him. Maybe if it had been a defensive tackle running with the ball, but not in this case. Jason Myers now for the extra point. And he puts this one through as the lead moves to 13-7. So not only the cough up, but then the pick up on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way. The fumble return for a touchdown. This one fielded at the five. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Arizona's offense back out and ready to go. And in just about every game we see, partner, what do we do when we look at the stat sheet? We go right to the turnover differential. Without a doubt, because when we see that, that pretty much tells the tale of the game. And I know there's still plenty of time to go, but you've got to take care of the football in order to win it. Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And this will be swung out here for counter. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Connor up the middle. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Six now, first and ten. Throwing now is Murray. And complete to Zach Ertz. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. Now we're going to get a timeout here as it looks like there's a Seahawk injured on the play. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. and 10 at the 45-yard line. Here's Murray as he sets to throw it. Finding Ertz again. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Throwing on first down is Murray. DeAndre Hopkins making the catch. Touchdown! Cardinals, DeAndre Hopkins, 32 yards, and the 
Cardinals have tied the ball game with a chance to take the lead. So the quarterback drops to throw, looks over, and boom, a guy that wide open, he has to be thinking, wait a minute, this is some kind of a dream. This is too easy. Yeah, a great dream, one you don't want to wake up from, but for the defense, almost feels like there was a bust in coverage. Prater on and the extra point. And this puts him on top by a penny. It's 14-13. That time, 75-yard drive, five plays. And it's finished off by the touchdown from DeAndre Hopkins. Touchdown out is Prater to kick. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. But Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Now Gino on first down. This is the tight end fan. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. That's a staple of this offense. Drag round to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Throwing now is Gino. Deep ball for Goodwin. And got his man complete. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. It's a gain of 35. We always talk about the guy who paid off the play. Don't we got caught it or ran it? But how about the elements that go into making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field. Pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route well run. And the football right on the money. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. They'll fake it. Now Smith. Throw across his body and it's intercepted. Picked by Nick Vigil. And the Carlsons are going to take over at their own 28 yard line. Darn, I think this will want to ride very simply because he overestimated his arm strength and his ability to fit it anywhere he wants to. A lot of quarterbacks do that and often pay the price. Kyler Murray and the Cardinals going to head back out. He threw a touchdown pass last time they had it, and he'll look to get him in the end zone again here as they start with the first down. It's Connor as they stay on the ground. And he's got some space here. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. I don't know what this says about me, but I love successful runs up the middle when the blocking is so well executed like that. And it doesn't matter whether it's zone blocking, whether it's a power scheme. When you have a blocker on a defender, and then the running back can read it, find the proper hole, and just go, sometimes a thing of beauty. The big play to start him out has him at the 45 already. Now Murray. To Connor on the check down. And they're going to get this up to midfield. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, 
and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Here's Murray from midfield. He'll get this to Connor underneath. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? now on first down looking for the out route and he's got more and he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds a gain of eight there on the play and that'll bring up a second down in just a couple here's Connor on the read option and he'll follow his blockers there all the way down to the 23-yard line. 48 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. going to throw. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. No shortage of impressive moments for him thus far. Now he's halfway to the century mark, and we're still in the first half. There's been no answer for his running ability so far by the defense. I can't wait to see what adjustments they'll have to make during the halftime break. Now a first and 10 at the 11. There's Murray. Green's got it over the middle. Calling the gain of three on the play. And that's going to bring up second down. Shotgun now for Murray. And this is going to be caught. No, they say it's incomplete. The way he's been slamming in the first half, you expect everything he throws to go for a touchdown. But I guess he's got the ability to try to pick up that third, isn't he? Yeah, I thought he had him for a second, but you're right not to be. An eight-play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. To throw is Murray. Pressure gets him back at the 14. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. But that's what they have to do more defensively, not just getting sacks. They have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving him up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. down Murray off and the Cards field goal unit and Matt Prater out there now this a 31 yard attempt Prater's kick is good and that'll move their lead up to four now so Charles they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal and anytime you give the ball up what's the first thing a coach tells his defense don't let them score off of this you've got to put out the fire in fact in 2021 that's what one NFL coach 
termed his defense, the firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. Prater now will send it away following the made field goal. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And out now come the Seahawks. As the offense comes out here, Charles, remember they threw the interception last time out, but they were moving the football down the field. Looked like they were going to have a sustained drive that ended in points, but then the pick ensued. And because of that, there's no way you can call the last drive a success. Yes, there are things to build on because they found some play calls at work. Now they've got to build another drive and find a way to avoid the turnover the plague did on the last one. Here's Walker to start the drive. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Geno out to throw. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. You could tell they wanted to get that ball downfield. They had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. They come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. On third down, here's Walker. And he'll be stopped at the 27-yard line, well short of the first down marker. Now a timeout called for by the defense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Here's Michael Dixon now to punt. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. They call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Cards will take over first and 10. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Murray's throw pulled in by Hopkins. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Murray now on first down. He's got the connection to Moore, and they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. As a passer, always trying to find that open window to throw the ball downfield. How about this one? Right in the middle of the field, right in the heart of the defense. Now the Cards going to call another timeout, their second, as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. To throw, it's Murray. He'll dump this one off to Connor. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. Well, they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, 
that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. Again, they'll throw with Murray. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far in second down. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and they have them staring at it. And I believe they buzzed down. They're going to take another look at this play with Biggest all reviews play coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is converted. So that challenge is successful one. Murray to air it out again. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And they're going to be set up now with a ball at the 13-yard line. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. The Cardinals forced to burn their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Here's Murray. Flush to his right. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. It'll be a gain of three on what should be the final play of this first half. So we have reached halftime with the visiting Cardinals out in front. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. First order of business, though. Let's get a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for Arizona. And it's been the passing game that's been the story. They have feasted on this secondary to the tune of 200-plus yards already through two quarters. Meanwhile, for the Seahawks, we check on their numbers on the ground in the first half as they know they'll need to be better to overcome this halftime deficit. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. the second half gets started. Free kick out of bounds. Well, you don't see that often. He just mishit it, and it goes out of bounds. Well, I know sitting up here, and I'm looking at you, and you're looking at me, and I know we're both Our thinking the same first thing. First. Isn't it easy enough to keep it between the sidelines? Because unless you're intentionally doing it for some reason, well, that's a costly mishit, and now you put your team in a bad spot. On first and ten, here's Murray. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Had to do a double take on that one, Brandon, because so far in this game, we haven't seen many of his passes fall incomplete. So second down and ten. Once again, they'll go from the 40. 
An option handoff given to Connor. And nowhere for him to go again. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Calling their gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. He's already fumbled once in this game, and I thought the ball started to jostle there a little bit, but they got to him quickly at the line of scrimmage. They sure did. And remember, if you're not a very confident runner and you've already dropped it once, if there's traffic around you, the only thing you think about is protecting the football, not gaining yards. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. Well, he was just trying to contain DeAndre Hopkins, and he got a little too close. And because of his ability to line up in different spots on the field and come at you from different angles, different guys have to cover him, and all of them have the same issue. How do you do it without interfering? In this case, it didn't get done. First down run for Connor, not going to get much, maybe a yard, second down. It went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired, I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Throwing now is Murray. That pass complete to Moore. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And they're knocking on the door now. As a good run there, going to take this to about the 10-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. So I tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. First down, Murray. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Connor. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way. And really, we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. They run behind center with Connor. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. This will be play number eight on the drive. It's third and goal. Murray now. And it's caught. Touchdown, Cardinals. Rondale Moore from six yards away. And the Cardinals take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember well executed to give them a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. Prater for the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11. So that drive in total eight plays, and it winds up in a touchdown for Arizona.
And after the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Here comes the Seahawks offensive unit. They'll have it first to begin the third. They make their second half debut here. Things are looking a little bit tougher now. You give up the points there, Charles, that touchdown drive on the other side. So now it's a two-score game here. Got to be careful. They certainly do, and I'm just wondering at halftime if those guys just looked into each other's eyes and realized what they've got to get done and come out a little bit more charged up because if they don't get some kind of points here, that next drive, that could make this a three-possession game. The Smith's throw caught here by Metcalf. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a gain of 12 first down Seahawks. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. From the gun, it's Walker. And boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends are like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Sticking with Walker on second down. And the defense on him quickly there as they stop him at the 40 for a gain of just two. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Eluding the pressure right. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. The goal is certainly to try and make a big play happen and climb back into this game, but you have to be careful. If you overdo it, you could turn it over and hurt your team. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. Fair catch signal for and taken at about the 15-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And this drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. 25 yards that time. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. Six yards there on the keeper, it's second down. I don't care what the emphasis is in the NFL at any given time, every defense is still gonna say their number one goal every game is stop the run. And right now, they're not doing that, and that really chips away at your confidence. On second down, Connor looking for space. And a good push there defensively as they stop him at the 48. Gave him just one. 
And a big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. Well, praise has to go to the guys on the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game. And while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. Here's Andy Lee now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. This is taken at the 18. That'll go as a punt of 32 yards. And it'll be Seahawks football first and 10. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Let's go, man. They'll fake the handoff. Now Smith. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. And the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it upfield, and that brings up second down. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. We sit in quarter number three out in Seattle, a second and ten now. Smith setting up the screen here. This is Walker. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Time to give a little credit here. That was an excellent read by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, you're crediting your defense. Got to credit them on that one because they tried to fool them, right? Tried to trick them, ran a screen, and they went to it and smothered it for a loss of yardage. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now it's Smith. And that is incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. Here's more on the return. It'll be a 40-yard punt, eight on the return, and that will come the offense as they take over. Getting set to go again, DeAndre Hopkins marches back onto the field. And I know that they've double-teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Throwing on first down is Murray. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. Here's Murray as he sets to throw it. 
And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Murray now to throw. Buying time to his left. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. He's starting to fall into the category of not fair because when he's on target throwing the ball, he's dangerous. But when you add in his ability to make plays with his feet, <laughs> almost impossible. Yeah, exactly. They've had trouble stopping him in the secondary. This time they've got the great coverage. Oh, he can run too. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and ten. Now Murray. This will be caught by Brooke. Oh, he put it on the carpet, a fumble. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. So potentially a turning point here in the third quarter as that swings the door back open just a bit. Yeah, they're still down two scores, but I do think we're at that point in the game but you're going to reach for the football whenever possible. You're going to hear the coaches scream from the sidelines. Tackle him. Second guy in. Tackle the ball. Following the fumble recovery, Smith to the right side, incomplete to Metcalf. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is a receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing, and they got it done. A good gain on first has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. Up the middle, here's Walker. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Seattle, Washington. This offense so far on third down, they're struggling. 0 for 6 thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Now, here's Michael Dixon as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. That punt was near perfection as it checked up inside the five-yard line. You never know where these things are going to go, do you? No. What was it? You got a John Heisman quote about that, yeah, right? Yeah, he said the football is roughly a prolate spheroid, which means it's going to bounce funny, and you never know where it's going to end up. Murray now on first down. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. You know what I like about that play? He didn't try to do too much on first down. He took what the defense gave him, put together a solid game to bring up second and manageable. Now they have a couple of plays to pick up just a few yards and a new set of downs. Out of the shotgun, they'll run with counter. And they're able to bring him down at the 20. 
58 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. Well, you know, being aggressive, but sometimes you see the guys overly aggressive and you don't secure tackles. Guys break through. Trying to sell out to pry that football loose, and just as you said, cost some yardage. Yeah, you gotta go get him. Stand him up first before you go for the ball. Don't just go for it initially. Here's Murray. And this will be swung out here for counter. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four at the 26-yard line. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Murray going to throw. Escaping the pressure right. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. These are running back numbers that he's accumulating right now. Received double-digit carries and has rewarded them by breaking the century mark and rushing, in addition to what he's done through the air. Definitely MVP caliber football we're witnessing. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They'll fake it to Connor. Now Murray. Caught by the tight end, Ertz. They showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and they'll be left with a second and about a foot. Let's go. To throw, it's Murray. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Connor. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 47. To throw is Murray. Flushed out right. Murray has it knocked loose, fumble. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And a great return as he gets this all the way down close to the 30-yard line. Partner, that would look like it was over. I mean, they had control, had the football, and the defense had to make a play in order to keep them in the game. That's exactly what they did. And now that door ajar, two-score game, so hold on here, not done in the fourth. This offense back out and set to go for their next drive. They trail by two scores in the fourth, and their defense did its job getting the fumble recovery. A time to see what this offense has left in the tank. the middle they run it's Walker he'll work his way up the middle for a gain of about four and second down nice chunk of yards on first down it really opens up your options for what you want to do on second you go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top second and six throwing is Smith this one goes underneath to Walker. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. 
that might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back, and it can turn into a big gain downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short gain. They'll try for the first with Walker. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Back to Walker on first down. And they'll work this down to the 15 for a pickup of four. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Coming up on a second and six. On second down, it's Walker. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Smith on third down. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. How about this defense? They came up with a couple of big plays in this sequence and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. So on fourth down, here's Jason Myers for the Seahawk field goal. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. Myers' kick is good, and that'll make this an eight-point game. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. ready to set up shop. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago, so they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and ten. And they'll begin by running the option. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 15 yards is the pick up there, and the drive starting very nicely. First down. Well, that's the fear any defense has when the quarterback gets involved in the running game. You don't usually account for him, and he's hurting them today. Yeah, he's been very involved in the running game. Defensively, when you've got the coverage good downfield, how do you account for him, though? Occasionally, you start to spy him. Take someone that's the same agility, who can dance with him, run with him, and try and keep him in the pocket. Yeah, that'll be especially critical here as we come down the stretch in the fourth. On first and ten is counter. And he loses the football a second time. But I think a Cardinal was able to gain possession, yes. So they will hold on to the ball. Wow, that ball gets knocked free. But a teammate comes along and scoops it up. 
almost like it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. On second down at four, Murray. That's complete to his running back, Connor. And they're going to be set up now with the ball at the 13-yard line. A lot of running backs in the passing game, they're just used to check it down to them or maybe dump off passes. But this guy, they use him to stretch the field, don't they? He stretched it right there, turned it into a really nice game. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Cardinals, they've got the football here as we get you reset. They've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. Again, a run with Connor. And he'll take this one inside the 10, down to the eight. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause of the action. A timeout here defensively. six yards here if they hope to move the chains on third down it's Connor and they'll bring him down one yard shy after a pickup of four now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next tight end on fourth. That one a back breaker as they wind up converting there on fourth. Deep in the red zone seemed like they had their mind made up that that was four down territory and now they've got it inside the five. I like the way you looked at that because you're thinking just like a play caller and a head coach who gave the play caller that authority. It was four down territory. They went for it, picked it up. They didn't get the touchdown, but what a great consolation prize. A new set of downs and another shot at the end zone. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. Down to a knee. Here's the Cardinals look to let the clock roll. Back at the two now. Here's second and goal. Down to Anigos Murray as that will just about wrap this thing up. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right? Just us against the world and get it done. <laughs> I fear that. I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. So it's a win here for the Arizona Cardinals. And a little bit of a surprise, they lose the turnover battle, but wind up winning the ball game. And this is very unusual because you know all teams stress winning the turnover battle as a key indicator to winning ball games. So when you get something that goes against the grain, like the one we saw here, it's quite the oddity. Now let's face it, they'll be very happy that they pulled this off, but they do know that in the future, they've got work on taking care of the football because this won't happen very often. 